Hello my friends. Today, we are going to the deserts and arid regions of the Western United States to see how farming and ranching work here. In the United States, arid lands and deserts are mainly found in states such as Nevada, Eastern California, Western Utah, Idaho, and Oregon. In recent years, the temperature differences between day and night in desert areas in the United States has always been quite high. In particular, in the Great Basin Desert in Nevada, temperatures can drop from 87 degrees Fahrenheit during the day to 13 degrees Fahrenheit at night. It is estimated that by 2021, about 799 million acres of land in the United States is considered desert, accounting for 33% of the country's area. Of course, this statistic includes both arid and semi-arid regions. Currently, there are about 289,000 active farms in the Western United States of which about 37% of these farms are located in arid or semi-arid lands. Due to the extremes of this climate, crop farming in the arid regions of the United States is not as productive as ranching or livestock farming. Common crops grown in arid regions include alfalfa, potatoes, or wheat, The first place we will visit in this video is the state of Arizona, where up to 63% of the land is desert, arid, and semi-arid. These two farmers are establishing a nice pasture to raise poultry right in the desert. This is a small ranch located in the town of Whitman, about 35 miles northwest of Phoenix, Arizona. At this desert farm, about 30 adult turkeys are being raised for meat. In addition, they are also considered close friends for this farmer couple. Every morning, dozens of turkeys will leave the coop and roam freely around the farm. Of course, their range is limited by the vent system, which helps to prevent the turkeys from moving too far away from the farm. In addition to turkeys, pigs are also animals raised on this six-acre farm. The number of pigs raised in the barn at this farm is always maintained at 50 to 20 heads. Every day, the pigs here will be fed twice in the morning and the late afternoon with mainly corn. In addition, leaves are also used to enrich the diet of this herd. Due to living in these conditions and often being free to run around, the quality of pork at these farms is always much higher than those of pigs raised on the factory farms. These ranches don't only farm pigs and turkeys. To add to the diversity, there are animals such as ducks, chickens, and geese. After about six weeks from being hatched, this small desert grassland is ready to welcome the chickens to live and feed. Of course, with a fairly modest area, the number of chickens raised at this farm is not too many. According to the USDA statistics, by 2022, about 57% of the total 20,300 farms in Arizona will be located in desert, arid, and semi-arid lands. The agricultural industry in Arizona generates about $4.1 billion in revenue each year, and its impact on the state's economy is about $23.3 billion. 
Next, we will travel to the arid regions of the Mojave Desert in southeastern California and parts of Nevada to see how thousands of sheep here are raised. Unlike the sheep raised in California's Central Valley region, these desert-raised sheep roam all day long across barren lands in search of scarce food. In fact, the amount of food that sheep consume is much less than that of other livestock, so they are considered more suitable for living and surviving in these desert and arid lands. Cattle are often raised in semi-arid areas where the climate is less extreme and natural food sources are more abundant. On average, each sheep can travel about 2.3 miles per day in search of food. With a flock of about 100 sheep, ranchers need a minimum of 31 acres of pasture to rotate for the sheep to graze on. Even in areas with harsh climatic conditions and low amounts of natural grass, ranchers will still need about 50 acres of pasture to feed 100 sheep. According to USDA statistics, by 2021, in the United States, there are about 84,000 sheep farms in operation and about 71% of sheep farms are located in western states. In particular, California is the state with the largest number of sheep farms in the western states, with about 423 farms. Each year, sheep farms in the western United States generate $931 million in revenue from sheep sales. This revenue does not include the revenue from wool, milk, and other products of the millions of sheep. When talking about livestock farms in the arid west, we cannot ignore horse farms. With a scale of tens to hundreds of animals in Montana, Oregon, or California. In particular, with more than 42,000 wild horses living there. Another state in the western United States, Nevada, is home to the most amount of wild horses in the country. The number of wild horses living in Nevada today accounts for 51% of the country's wild horses. Wild horses living in arid and semi-arid regions often compete directly with livestock for food. This is also the main reason why they are considered a problem for U.S. agriculture. The most common animal that roams the arid lands of the western United States are cattle. According to the National Agricultural Statistics Service, as of January 2023, the number of cattle raised on farms in the western United States was approximately 27.3 million heads, representing 29% of the national cattle and calf population. Different from goats and sheep farms, livestock ranches in arid regions need more land for each of their livestock. Specifically, a herd of cattle and calves of about 100 will need at least 180 acres of land to rotate grazing upon. Even the area of land for grazing will be larger if the climate in that area is too harsh or if there is too little natural grass. In general, most farming and livestock farming in the arid regions of the West United States is fraught with difficulties in terms of water availability, foraging, and heat stress of animals.
In preparation for the honey harvesting process, the workers here will remove the honeycomb frames from the hive, and they will use smoke to remove the bees clinging to these frames. According to USDA statistics in 2022, there are about 121,000 honey beekeepers in the United States. Of these, about 37,000 people are professional beekeepers. Currently, there are about 2.7 million bee colonies in the country, and California is the state with the largest number of bee colonies in the country, with about 253,000 colonies. However, the states that produce the most honey in recent years in the United States are North and South Dakota. California only ranks third on this list. After the honeybees have been driven out, thousands of honey frames are sent to the factory for honey production. At the same time, new frames we placed in the hive to continue the honey mining process. At this factory, workers will use a scraper knife to cut the beeswax, covering the outside of the honey frame. And now the sweetest part is revealed. According to a report of the American Honey Producers Association, in 2022, honey production across the country is 127 million pounds, down 14% from 2021. On average, each colony yields about 46 pounds of honey per year. After the beeswax is cleaned, these frames will be placed into the honey extricator, and the machine will be rotated until all the honey stuck to the frame is cleaned off. Finally, the honey is filtered and stored in hundreds of barrels, each weighing 620 pounds. Each year, the honey industry in the United States brings in sales of 315 to 330 million dollars. We are currently in the southwest of the San Joaquin Valley, California to see how millions of pomegranates are harvested. At the end of October, heavy rains caused severe damage to dozens of pomegranate farms here. Thousands of pomegranates have been cracked, causing their quality to be greatly reduced. These pomegranates were picked and sold to juice factories instead of being shipped to supermarkets or farmers markets. According to USDA statistics, by 2022, in the United States, there are 1,056 active pomegranate farms with an arable land area of around 33,000 acres. Of that, up to 91% of pomegranate production in the United States is produced in California. During the annual pomegranate harvest season, about 2,100 workers flock to farms to pick this fruit, and their average salary in 2022 is $9 per hour. This is the mid-break meal of the pomegranate harvesters, and it is provided free of charge by the farm owners. The next place we will visit is the garlic fields in Kern County, Southern California. Unlike other garlic growing regions, most garlic in California is harvested manually by workers from Mexico. 
The beginning of June every year is the time when thousands of workers flock to these garlic fields in California to work, and this work will last for about three to four weeks. These workers will cut off the roots and stems of the garlic plant, and the garlic will be placed in plastic buckets. After that, these plastic buckets are filled with garlic, and these workers will dump them into larger wooden crates. After each of these, the workers will be marked on their scorecard. The salary that the garlic harvest workers here receive is around $9 to $13 per hour. In California, in 2021, has about 24,700 acres of farmland used to grow garlic, and the yield is about 347 million pounds, accounting for 91% of the country's production. At peak times, the garlic harvest will be done after dark to keep up with the schedule. Next, we will go to a citrus farm in Polk County, located in the heart of Florida, to see how the process of harvesting millions of citrus fruits happens. In recent years, Florida has always been the state with the largest citrus growing area in the United States, with around 621,000 acres used, accounting for 73% of the citrus growing area of the country. The beginning of October to June every year is the time when citrus harvesting in Florida is at its busiest. The citrus industry in the state is estimated to provide 76,000 jobs and generate an impact of nearly $9 billion annually. According to a USDA report in 2022, Florida alone produces up to 34 billion pounds of citrus fruit. This contributes to making the United States the second largest citrus fruit producer in the world, second only to Brazil. In the next part of the video, we will travel to North Dakota to see how the hunters here hunt thousands of snow geese. During their migration, snow geese often stop at wetlands, estuaries, grain fields, or any other places where they can find food. The appearance of rows and rows of snow geese in certain areas can cause the vegetation and natural landscape in that area to be severely affected because their droppings are abundant. In preparation for hunting hundreds of snow geese, Early in the morning, these hunters place hundreds of fake snow geese in the field as bait. When detecting a flock of snow geese passing by, all these hunters will use whistles combined with the movement of fake geese to lure the geese to fly close to the ground. When hundreds of snow geese are close enough to the ground, the hunters will open fire all at once, and each time they can catch 20 to 30 snow geese. 